well, at this point, Pat Smear had joined the band. Yes, yeah. Pat. Right. He and that the, was a huge. Like from the release of the album, he was touring with yeah, you guys. This was it was big because we had made the album, and Kurt had talked about. You know, at one point there was a second guitarist in Nirvana mm-hmm. before I joined the band, and he wanted to get another <clears throat> guitarist at this point. And he says, um, he goes down to Los Angeles. He comes back. He says, I found our second guitar player. And we said, really, who's that? He said, Pat Smear from The Germs. Mm -hmm. And if anybody knows The Germs, they were very early on the punk rock band in Los Angeles, perhaps the most dangerous. And um, so I just thought like, oh my God, I can't believe that fucking guy's still alive because he was in The Germs. (laughs) And And also, and a a sad side note is, side note is like Darby Darby Crash. Yeah. He committed suicide. Yeah, the singer of The The Germs. The Germs. Anyway, so Pat comes up, and I'm just expecting this big, disgusting, fat junkie, and he's the most wonderful, energetic, brilliant, beautiful, well put together. Uh, he 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 really breathed this whole new life into the band. The great thing too is I there's a great anecdote that defines his contribution to the band. In addition to being a great musician, and 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 I think what I've always read is that Kurt wanted someone who could also help handle some of the you know technical yes. parts so that he could focus more on the performance and the and and singing and so obviously Pat can do that but the other thing that was great is that he had this uh great attitude and oh, beyond, there was a yeah. story of you guys playing a show and then there's a not a nice review about the show and it says you know the show was off and someone's reading the review oh and I people remember are getting, that people are getting pissed that was the first so, sorry to interrupt the yeah. first night of the Op- the opening night of the tour, the Utero tour, was at the Arizona State Fair, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's the first night, and so you know it takes a couple shows to get rolling, and so it was yeah. Edna Gunderson from USA Today. She's the lead, <laughs> <laughs> a name that will live in infamy. Know. Yeah. And world she gave us a Garth. mediocre review, and like, why didn't she go like three or four shows into the tour? Then she would have caught us, and that's what you get on this. Um, right. box set you get the band is at full, that's, that's full but, yeah, but what happens is this review comes it. out and the story I heard uh, is that the, the review comes out and everyone on the bus is like god damn it why did USA Today write this about us and Pat said oh come on we sucked and everybody <laughs> laughed meaning just sort of <laughs> taking taking the piss out of the whole thing come yes. on we were off well you know well also i love that who do you call to take over the technical side of things in a guitar band the fucking guy from the germs yeah yeah it's i like, can't think of a ba- <laughs> i can't think of a band that is a, a a closer parallel to the kind of like uneasy feeling that you got from the weirdest moments of nirvana than the germs like their 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 whole thing had that same sort of yeah, like familiar but slightly sleazy and slightly uncomfortable quality, and the, and it was a sonic thing. Like the sound of Pat Smear's guitar, it sounded a little sour and a little you know a little creepy, and it seemed like a like it was a natural. As soon as I heard about it, I thought, oh yeah, that's a natural. It yeah. was it was great. So when we came out to do these shows, I mean, there were bigger shows, and I mean, really, it was our first arena tour. You know, when did you like was did you like playing the arenas? It, it felt strange at first, I think. I mean, I, towards the end of 1991, we did an arena tour opening up for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And, um, you know, I, I was always afraid that that what we did, that energy wouldn't translate in a in a bigger room, yep. you know, because we were used to playing places this big and put us in the corner there and the place explodes and it's amazing to try to, you know, move that yeah. to a bigger room would be hard. So um, it felt weird. All of a sudden, there was like caterers. Yeah, like we had a caterer caterers. on tour, and then the caterer fired him because they made the wrong mac and cheese. Well, like, no, because <laughs> they did it because they had really good food. I thought it was really good, and Kurt like corn dogs and macaroni and cheese and our bologna sandwiches. And so, so they were making actual macaroni with actual cheese. And he yeah. had never had that before. And, and that was, was the just, last fucking <laughs> straw. <laughs> you know, so it was just like, you know, it was one of those things like, ah. Uh, and well, we did a show, we had a show. It was a 90 minute show. We had a stage set up. We would do our acoustic breakdown part. Yeah, it's like We did the shit. same show every night. 
Um, and we would play, it was like $20 tickets. Tickets were like 20 bucks because you could sell CDs and make money. And then we had like working family prices. But then also the best part was we're like, oh, okay, we're an arena band now. Right. Cool. The opening band is going to be the boredoms from Japan. <laughs> I know. Or the opening yeah. band is going to be fucking the butthole surfers. So you've got all these kids that like just bought their Nirvana t-shirt. And they come to the rock show to see their favorite band. And they've got like Bobcat Goldthwait is the MC. Yes. And then yeah. fucking the butthole surfers. And the <laughs> kids are like, what the did Bob, fuck is going on? How right did uh, Bobcat Goldthwait become the opener for Kurt, Nirvana? You, you guys were real fans. We were fans. Yeah. Kurt had Meet Bob, that record. Yeah. And then we just so happened to be, it was like in 1990. And I, we were in like the Michigan or Wisconsin at a college radio station. And Bobcat was there, and he's like, "Hey, we know you." He didn't know who we were. We nobody knew who we were. Like, "Hey, we, you're you're on Police Academy." Like, we we're like, <laughs> <laughs> and he he tells the story. He goes, like, "Yeah, I met them, and I said, good luck with your little band." As <laughs> as we said goodbye, <laughs> and then we just yeah, I don't know. We just got he was sort of on our side, like as as. As cool. a comedian, sure, he was like kind of a cynical, subversive, yes. fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah. And so we liked him. And he got a bad review. Rex Reed gave him a bad review, and he goes, "He was my favorite judge on the Gong Show." <laughs> <laughs>